morning, East Street Church. We're so happy to have you this morning. I hope you're going to worship with us. Feel the presence of God wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I just want you to feel the presence of God. And I'm strongly encouraging you to sing along with us as we're going to be worship, going to be worshiping our God. Let a king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from, for it is my song. Let a king of my heart be the shadow.
Just put it in trust in her. Put your trust in her. Put your trust in her. It's not gonna let you down. Oh God, be faithful. So joyful. with me, oh come let us adore him.
show you the voices only. Take control here and now. Take control here and now. Take control here and now. Take control. Thanks again, Shea, worship team. We so appreciate every week you leading us in worship, helping us to connect with the heart of God. Isn't it great to worship God today? I want to say thank you to all of you for joining us for our online service today. Thanks for taking time out of your day. Thanks for worshiping together with us and now for opening your heart to God's Word. Uh, we Every week we spend time uh, inviting God to speak to us through His Word. We know that it touches and changes our lives if we'll allow it to. I want to invite you today, uh, before we jump into His Word, to just pray with me and ask Him to, to do just that. God, we thank You again today for the power and the authority of Your Word. Lord, it is the truth that we stand upon. It is what we build our lives upon. And God, I pray that today, as we open our hearts to receive from your word today, Lord, that you would truly deposit the seeds of your word into the fertile soil of our hearts. And Lord, may it bring something beautiful. Lord, may it, may it blossom into something beautiful that will bring glory to you, that will touch the lives of the people around us as they see Jesus in us. I pray, God, that today, Lord, that we would truly be open. We, we pray, Lord, that you would eliminate any distraction that would keep us from hearing from you today. I pray, God, that you'd help me to get out of the way so you can have your way as we open ourselves to receive all that you want to deposit in our lives today. In the strong name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, we're in the midst of a series called Love Came Down, and I want to read a verse for you that really sums up this idea of love coming down. It's in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, and it says this, God showed how much He loved us by sending His one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through Him. That life is one of the gifts that God gives us through His Son Jesus, through the love that He demonstrated for us. He goes on to say, this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Listen, there is a beautiful gift. His name is Jesus, and God sent Him from heaven. Love came down, and it changed everything. My prayer for you today is that you would sense the love of God, and as we examine God's Word, that you would discover the peace the gift of peace that He has for your life. How many of you are ready for some of that? I know that it's been a crazy year, 2020. We look back on this year and there's been a lot of chaos, a lot of turmoil, a lot of uncertainty, worry, anxiety. I mean, those are the terms that we use to describe 2020. And my prayer for you is that right in the midst of everything that's going on, that you would be able to experience the peace of God in your life. I, have a, I believe that God has promised to provide that for us through His Son, Jesus, and I, I hope that you will experience that today. Uh, we're going to look first at Luke chapter 2. It's really the familiar, common story of the birth of Jesus, the announcement of the Messiah being born. And I want to look at verses 8 through 14 today, uh, kind of as an opener and so read along with me if you've got your Bible or on a device. It says, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. The angel said to them, Fear not, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God 
and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. Peace on earth. That's what the multitude of heavenly hosts declared when they were announcing the birth of Jesus to those shepherds that night. They said, Peace on earth. How many of you know we need some peace on earth? Amen? Well, we have it, and he it, and it comes to us through this gift, Jesus, that we celebrate on Christmas and around this season. You know, I believe that peace is perhaps one of the deepest uh, needs and desires of the human heart. I'm not the only one that thinks that. I found several authors who, who made that kind of statement. One of them is Ken Hemphill in his book, The Names of God. I would strongly encourage that you take some time to search it out and read it if you ever get a chance. It's a great book about the names of God and really who God is as we examine His names. And in that book, he says, Peace is the deepest desire and need of the human heart. When you find yourself wondering where is the blessing of God's presence in your life, you need only to remember that He is Jehovah Shalom. I'm sure you're familiar with that term, Shalom. We're going to talk about it today because it is the peace of God. And His name is Jehovah Shalom. He goes on to say, He, Jehovah Shalom, desires to bring peace if only we will simply return to Him. It's a great desire in our hearts, in our lives. We all want peace. We want peace in our relationships. I mean, come on. Who has ever come to you and said, you know, I'm really thankful for the tension in my relationship? Or who comes along and says, you know, I just feel so blessed that I'm uncertain about where I stand with my friend or my neighbor? No, no nobody says that because the desire, the known desire of our heart is that we would have peace in those relationships. Unfortunately, as much as we want peace, we want harmony, we want to be understood, we, we want that peace in relationships, oftentimes what we experience in our relationships is just the opposite. We have misunderstandings instead of understandings. We have tensions instead of peace. We, 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 we become offended with, with each other, and that offense uh, develops into bitterness and Hopefully not, but sometimes it does happen. There's unforgiveness, and all of these things lead to brokenness in relationship rather than peace in relationships. We know peace doesn't stop just with our relationships. The desire for peace is beyond relationships. It's in every aspect of our lives. We desire peace in our circumstances. We desire peace in our homes, peace in our schools. We desire peace in our city, our nation. We desire world peace, right? Every one of us has this deep desire. And I believe that that's because we were created to have relationship with God and our sin that came into the world caused the relationship to be broken. But the good news for us today is that God gave us His Son to re reunite us with Him and to bring peace where peace was lost. And today, I know that many of us are wondering, is it even possible for us to have peace in our world today? Here's what I want you to recognize. What is mis oftentimes mistaken uh, about peace is that everything has to be, uh, you, know, at, you know, normal, no tension, no strife. Everything has to be, you know, at peace in order for us to experience peace. That's not the biblical picture of peace. I mean, think of it. Jesus entered a broken, hurting world. There was all kinds of, uh, of corruption. In fact, he himself, he, he faced all kinds of abuse and, and, and people were testifying falsely against him. They were lying about him. And, and, and so Jesus enters this world of brokenness where there's a lack of peace and he himself brings peace. I want you to realize today that in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of the storm, is where we can find peace. You know, I heard about uh, uh, this competition uh, that this art gallery was having. They invited people to submit paintings that would illustrate the idea, the concept of peace. And of course, you can imagine the paintings that were submitted, many of them beautiful, serene settings, you know, to, to demonstrate what this feeling of peace is. But the winner of that competition 
actually submitted a painting of a storm, lightning bolts and rain and wind. In fact, there was this this waterfall, this gushing water over the rocks because of the freshly fallen rain, floodwaters spilling over the rock. And in the midst of the storm, there's an image of a bird resting in its nest with all of the chaos going on around it. This bird is resting peacefully in its nest. That's the image of peace that I want you to see today, that no matter what's going on around you, that if you will draw near to God, if you will fix your heart, your mind, your thoughts on God, that He will keep you in perfect peace. In fact, that's the passage that I want us to land on today. It's Isaiah chapter 26, verses 1 through 4. Let me give you a little bit of history uh, context for Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the most familiar uh, prophets, and uh, we have a, a lot of writing, one of the, the, the longest uh, pieces of scripture in the Old Testament, Isaiah. And Isaiah testifies, he writes his prophecies in the midst of a really stormy time in the history of Israel. Israel is, is at war, they're, they're, they're actually uh, overtaken by Babylon, and much of what uh, Isaiah testifies, prophesies about is that God is allowing them to be overtaken by Babylon, that he's uh, trying to, to, to renew and restore them, but that there's punishment that, that is coming. And right in the midst of all of the fear, the turmoil, the chaos that the Israelites are facing, we, we find that Isaiah prophesies about a day to come, a day where there will be a beautiful song sung, that there will be worship for, of, of God's people. And listen to what he writes, Isaiah 26. He says, In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. I want to read to you verses, verse 3 again. You, speaking of God, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. This is Isaiah prophesying in the midst of chaos and fear, turmoil for the Israelites. And he's prophesying that there is a day that will come and we will sing this song. We will rejoice in the fact, in the truth that God keeps in perfect peace all who trust in him, whose thoughts are fixed on him. There's a powerful concept there that in the midst of whatever's going on in your life, that God can keep you in perfect peace. I want to ask you uh, today, what is on your mind? There's, a, there's a, 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 an illustration there, a, a connection between the perfect peace of God and our thought life. In fact, um, when he says, when Isaiah says that, um, that those who, whose thoughts are fixed, or another translation says those whose thoughts are stayed on you, on God, that, that word fixed or stayed in its original language, in the Hebrew language, is samak. And samak means to lean on, to, to rest on, really to put your full weight trusting in something. So what Isaiah is prophesying is this truth that if, our, if the weight of all of our thoughts, how many of you know sometimes your thoughts are, are heavy? If the weight of all of your thoughts are resting on God, then He will keep you in perfect peace. There's a connection, a very clear connection, that oftentimes the fight for peace or the battle to find peace, to know peace, starts, begins with our thinking, in our minds. And, and I want to ask you again, where does your mind go? I'm not talking about when you're at work and you're focused on work or when you're at home and you're focused on being part of your family or cooking dinner or whatever the responsibility might be. I'm talking about during the downtime. When you've got some time to rest, where does your mind go? I would imagine that it probably goes to wherever you have been feeding it. 
In other words, if you've been thinking about all the negative news, right? If you've been on watching television or you've been scrolling through social media or in every conversation that you had throughout the day was around the negative news, around the challenges, the problems, the hardships, the turmoil that's going on in the world. If that's where your thinking has been, then probably in your downtime, that's what's going to consume your thoughts. Well, how do we avoid that? I'll tell you, turn off the TV. Stop scrolling through social media. Change the subject uh, in, in your interactions with people. Now, listen, I'm not telling you not to be informed. That would be silly. But what I am telling you is that there's got to be a cap. There's got to be a limit to how much information we feed ourselves, and especially when it comes to the negative news and the negative media. It's, it's this downward spiral that we end up in, and we just keep in it being inundated with all of these negative thoughts. And if that's where our thoughts are at, guess what? We will surely lose the peace that God wants us to experience. You know, Paul actually addressed this very issue in his letter to the Philippians. He says to them in chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, he says, Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. He goes on to say, keep putting into practice all that you've learned and received from me, everything that you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Paul also connects our thought life. He says, Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, the things that are worthy of praise, and then you will experience the peace. The the God of peace will be with you. There's an absolute connection between your thought life and the peace that you experience. And I want to just encourage you that God desires to... Not, not for you to be uh, inundated with the negative thoughts and with the overwhelming uh, results of our sin and brokenness in our world, but rather that He has sent His beautiful gift of Jesus to redeem, to restore, to fix, to heal, uh, to, to, to make right everything that is wrong in our world. Is it all happening right now in these moments? No, it's not. But God surely has a plan to restore, to renew, to redeem. And that's where we need to fix our thoughts. We need to think about the potential of God and His work in us and through us and what He is coming to do for us in His Son, Jesus. That's the Advent, anticipating what God has come to restore, not the brokenness but rather the the things that he is going to restore. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9, again, a a, a prophecy about the birth of Jesus. Isaiah prophesies this in verse 6. He says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Say it with me. Prince of Peace. Have you ever wondered what it means that Jesus, it was prophesied that Jesus would be called, one of his names would be the Prince of Peace. I've thought about it. I've wondered. And what I have come to find in my study and my research is that what this means is that God gave him all authority over peace. In other words, if we're going to experience peace, it's going to because be because of Jesus himself. That was the gift that God gave to us. Now listen, I realize that today, especially in my context, in my culture, names don't oftentimes, uh, they're not often chosen because of their meaning. Sometimes it, it, that's not true. Sometimes they are chosen for that. But take for, for instance, my name, Doug. I don't think my parents chose my name because they liked the meaning dark blue or dark or, or blue waters, something to that nature. I don't think my parents thought, oh, I think that our son is going to be, you know, have something to do with blue waters. No, they chose it because they liked the name or perhaps I was named after a, a family member. But, but in the Bible days, names were chosen really to, to describe the essence of the person. We know that Adam, that, that his name is, is from the, the word that means 
uh, formed from dust, from dust. That's the essence of who Adam was. And we find it over and over again in Scripture. And the same is definitely true when we consider Jesus, whose name actually was not Jesus with J, the J. It was Yeshua, which is Savior. That's the essence of who Jesus is. He is a Savior. Not only that, but in Isaiah chapter 9, we find that Isaiah is prophesying that this baby that's going to be born, the Messiah that's going to be born, he's going to be named these names, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Here's what I want you to catch. Prince of Peace, author, authority of peace. It is the essence of who Jesus is. I want to remind you that peace is not the absence of trouble. It is actually the presence of Jesus in our lives. Why? Because that is his essence. He is the Prince of Peace. You know, um, I'll never forget the transition that our family made uh, from Swaziland to Ethiopia. Our, our kids were still pretty young. Our oldest, Kylie, was about 11 when we made the decision to leave Swaziland. And I can remember a lot of tears. I remember um, our kids were not real excited about leaving what was their home. Uh, they had spent uh, almost all their growing up years in Swaziland, and they grew to love that place as home. So when we introduced the idea to them that we were going to be moving, leaving their home, they were filled with grief and sadness and heartache. And it was a, it was a pretty um, <laughs> difficult time for all of us. Uh, again, lots of tears, but I can remember Tasha and I encouraging the kids that, you know, that God would, God would comfort them in this difficult time. And we encouraged them to pray and ask him to, to be that comfort for them. And I can remember, uh, shortly after encouraging our kids that way, that Kylie called out to me from her bedroom one day and she said, daddy, what does John 14, 27 say? And just out of curiosity, I, I, I was thinking, you know, why, do you, why do you want to know? I, I don't really know. We can look it up. And in fact, I encouraged her, why don't you look that up? But why are you asking, sis? I said, uh, where did this come from? She said, well, I was praying and asking Jesus to help me with all of these feelings of sadness and, and having to leave Swaziland. And as I was praying on the back of my eyelids, I saw John 14, 27. I said, well, great, let's look it up and read it. And so she opened it up and she read these words that I want to read to you. The promise of a loving Heavenly Father in the midst of turmoil of my baby girl, God gave her this promise that has become a life verse for her. It says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid." What an amazing promise that Jesus gave to his followers before he left, before he ascended into heaven. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. You notice that he didn't just, it wasn't just any old peace, but that he defined it as his peace. Why? Because he is the prince of peace. He's the authority on peace. And he says, I'm giving you my peace. Don't be afraid. Don't let your hearts be trouble. You know, we find a, a similar challenge and encouragement when we go back to the letter to the Philippians that Paul wrote in chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. He, he encourages them with this. He says, do not worry about anything. Easier said than done, right? And then he, he gives this great contrast. Do not worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. He wasn't saying, oh, if you're following Jesus, you'll never have anxiety or worry. No, he was saying when anxiety tries to come and rob you of your peace, he says, pray about everything. He says, uh, bring your request to God. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that you can understand. Why? Because it's God's. It, our finite minds cannot comprehend the beauty of the peace of God that He provides for us. Even when anxiety comes, worry comes, stressful things come, turmoil, tensions are all around. When the storms of life are there, He says, pray about all of it. Tell God what you're thankful for. Tell Him what's going on in your life. Then you'll experience God's peace. 
He goes on, he says, His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I want to remind you again that he declares that this is His peace. It's God's peace. The world doesn't give you peace. A, a fat bank account doesn't give you peace. It may, it may give you a moment of peace, but that's worldly peace. The right job is not what's going to provide the peace that you need. Uh, you know, having everything go perfectly according to your plan, that's not what's going to bring you lasting peace. Who gives peace? It's God alone through His beautiful gift in Jesus. And I want to just remind you today that if it's God who gives peace and not the world, then the world can't take it away. Amen? My prayer for you today is that in the midst of everything that's going on, that you would truly discover and know and experience the peace of God. But remember, it starts in your mind. Where is your mind? Where are your thoughts? Fix your, your thoughts. Fix your mind. Fix your heart on Him, and He will keep you in perfect peace. You know, that perfect peace there in the original context, it, it's not actually perfect peace. It's actually shalom, shalom. He repeats the word shalom almost as if to say it's peace on top of peace. It's, it, the word perfect doesn't even do it justice. It's a peace that can only be given by God. We can only know it through Christ. It's not the absence of troubles. It's the presence of Jesus in our lives. Would you pray with me today? I want to pray that God would help you to not only experience it, but experience perfect and know perfect peace. If you're anything like me, you may have peace one moment and then the next moment it's fleeing because of something that happens. Maybe because your thoughts are captured by something that brings anxiety or fear. But I, I believe that God wants us to, to know and learn how to walk and, and experience perfect peace. God, my prayer today for my friends is that any one of them that is lacking peace today, God, that you, in the midst of their fear, in the midst of their doubts, in the midst of their storm, whether there be anxiety, loss, sickness, God, in the midst of war, I pray, God, that your peace would keep us. God, that, that we would sense your presence in our lives and that that peace that comes only in your presence would help us make it through. God, there's all kinds of turmoil going on around us. God, help us to recognize that even in the midst of the turmoil, God, that you can bring peace. God, we thank you for that promise. God, we need that promise. We need it to be true in our lives, especially in these days. God, bring your peace. And Lord, may it bring comfort Lord, I pray that it would be a bright light in our lives to those around us who need to experience it too. God, help us to share the peace that we experience. Help us to share with others how to find that peace. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to take captive our thoughts. Lord, I pray that our thoughts would not run away and, and into things that are not healthy or not, are not pure and lovely and worthy of praise. But God, that we would truly know how to take captive every thought and bring it into submission to you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to discover, walk in, live in, and to know that perfect peace that you desire us to have today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining with us today. I appreciate your, you coming online and following along with us. I want you to know that when you're ready to join with us for an in-person gathering, you can jump on Telegram and find us at Eastridge Church Addis. We would love for you to make a reservation and to come and be with us. Uh, we're meeting every Sunday at 9, 10, 10, and 11.30. There's room for you. We would love to see you. We look forward to that day. Until then, God bless. Have a great week.